Hey everyone, Clark Kishai here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm back, and today, and I want to rank every single DLC 1 zombies map, rank worst way, so it's not specifically just Treyarch, we're going through every single zombies map. Firebase Z will be releasing, as of I've uploaded this video, three days away on Thursday, I will be streaming it on the channel, so make sure to go check that out there. So, yeah, I thought I'd rank every single DLC 1 zombies map, rank worst best within zombies history. Now, if you guys have seen my streams uh, for zombies over time and time again, I've always said that... Um, I don't hate any zombies map in particularly, but I will always uh, put one over the other. I will like a, a zombies map better than another zombies map, but that doesn't mean I hate any. So the one that I rank at the bottom, I don't hate the map at all. I like all the maps for what they are. It's just I do like other ones better than others. So yeah, so even if I done ranking every single zombies map rank worth the base, whatever was at the bottom, I do not hate legit i do not hate any zombies map at all this is just it's just i like other zombies map more than others and also the fact that just seeing as when it comes to ranking zombies maps the titles are ranking every single zombies map rank what's the best but you know what we'll go with it baby <laughs> starting off uh we have got eight uh dlc one zombies maps as of right now soon to be nine due to firebase c but coming in at the number eight spot you see on screen we have the darkest shore now the darkest shore we still see one for World War II zombies, and honestly, God, I, this map, I like it. I like the setting it has, and honestly, it could be a pain in the ass. Sure, it could be a pain in the ass solo. The more I've done the Easter egg solo, the more it's just gone used to me. I really do like the Darkest Shore for its atmosphere, and I actually really, really do love its Easter egg. When playing this map co-op, it is really, really fun, whether you're doing the Easter egg or something completely different. I don't know, in general, I just find this map really, really fun to play with friends, and there's just so much to do on this map. And the Ripsaw Blade, I think that's one of the coolest, like, wonder weapons that we've ever gone for, like, World War II zombies, per se. But all in all, in general, I have really no words to say for the Darkest Shore. I don't necessarily hate it. Just the one thing I would say is that Solo is a pain, unless I don't know a strap for the boss fight for Solo. My brain is dead. My brain is dead, because doing this Solo can be a pain in the ass. High runs on this map as a whole, it's alright I guess, because I remember for the final rake, uh, I remember when seeing Steve get to around 100 for the first time, uh, my man's just had to rely on every single trap around the map, and uh, I don't know if that's the same for the Darkest Shore, if anything it probably is, just with how the World War 2 zombie system works, but as a whole, Darkest Shore, definitely not a bad map, the way the fog works on this is actually really really cool, annoying as hell, yeah, but it's really cool. And again, the Easter egg, it's not bad. But again, playing this map co-op is definitely really, really fun. So if I had to recommend a co-op fun map, this would be one of uh, the maps I definitely say. So yeah, Darkest Shore is coming at the number 8 spot. Coming in at the number 7 spot, my boy Josh. I know you're going to hate me for this, but it's Outbreak. Now, Outbreak, this was the first map to be introduced into ExoZombie. So you're probably wondering, if it's the first map, how is this considered DLC 1? If you guys don't know, uh, when Advanced Warfare released, it never actually had Exo Zombies to begin with. To actually play Exo Zombies, when DLC 1 came out for Advanced Warfare, that is when Exo Zombies started. So, to actually play Exo Zombies, you actually had to pay, which actually sucked. But Outbreak as a whole, I saw this as a good way to start off Exo Zombies. The storyline was actually good. The Easter egg was simple, uh, excuse the RNG for the EM1. And just in general, it suited EXO Zombies as a whole. And if I was to ask most people out there who have really played at EXOs, I could see most people saying, oh, their favourite map is uh, Outbreak and such. Because I know a lot of people, especially for the people who haven't played EXOs as much, Outbreak would be their favourite map for Advanced Warfare. And honestly, I have done this Easter egg so many times on Easter eggs for days because I couldn't be fucking bothered doing Burger Town or Carrier until, like, recently. But as a whole... Outbreak is a simple, cool map, whether to go for high rounds or just do the simple easter egg, which the easter egg is, like, really simple. The only problem is the EM1 RNG, which is the thing that sucks the most. Um, but as a whole, when it comes to playing with friends, I've only done this easter egg uh, co-op a couple of times. It is actually genuinely really, really fun. And again, like I said, this map specifically does suit Exo Zombies as a whole, like, like D-Machine and Cold War Zombies, it was a good way to start off new mechanics, to start off the Advanced Warfare Zombies mechanics, where you get used to Exos within Zombies, the way the Zombies work within Exos. This was the first game to ever introduce the 3-hit system for Black Ops 3 as well. 
and in general outbreak just brought a lot of cool things uh just in general like outbreak there really isn't much to say apart from the fact that i do like the map the easter egg is simple if you do get the em1 out of the box without its bullshit rng and in general the high rounds on this map is definitely can be fun like i i, I don't know what the highest round is but oh my god i i just from what i've seen the last time i checked it was like around 100 something and oh my god that looked tedious as hell but as a whole, Outbreak, it's a cool, simple map to start off their game for, well, to start off Exozombies, because again, Advanced Warfare Zombies never really released when Advanced Warfare as a whole actually launched. So just letting you all know that. But apart from that, Outbreak, really all not much to say about it. And in general, it's just a cool, simple map for Exozombies. So yeah. That is why Outbreak is coming at the number 7 spot. And coming in at the number 6 spot, and I know my boy Johnny J, I know you're gonna fucking hate me for this, but it is Die Rise. Now, Die Rise released on Black Ops 2. This was DLC 1's Die Rise, and this is when we really started to really get into the Transit Crew, because the Transit Crew started in transit and basically die rise was all vertical so it was like a chinese dragon type of map i can't remember what it's really called but uh as of right now this was the one and only vertical map that i know that is in zombies as of right now and a lot of people didn't like how vertical it was a lot of people seem to actually like the uh, slick of fire even though it has been nerfed it is actually still a good ass wonder weapon till this day but pre-patched uh slick of fire that that shit was amazing you, you cannot tell me that shit was not amazing but as a whole die rise it is really really fun for high rounds if i was to do this shit solo i'd actually have fun doing die rise solo high rounds i wouldn't even care if i got to 100 if i got past round 30 i'd actually be quite happy with myself because Die Rise as a whole, again, it can be a real shitter, but I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know what to tell you all. I really don't know what to tell you all. Apart from the fact that Die Rise, it is just a fun map to play. Personally, personally, from my experience. Uh, for solo. And recently, I did do the Die Rise Easter Egg with LA, I think Pork and Flamer when uh, doing every single Easter Egg on one stream. I know I made part one. A part two is coming, I promise. Um... But as a whole, Die Rise was definitely really fun to play solo for high rounds. And there's really not all much to say. There is two sides to the Easter Egg along with every single transit map within Black Ops 2. You have the Buried Easter Egg, you have the Transit Easter Egg, and of course you have the Die Rise Easter Egg, whether you choose Max's side or uh, Richthofen's side. And as a whole, I actually do find, like, when I'm watching Die Rise speedruns, personally, I would do them. But actually watching Die Rise speedruns, I actually do find them really entertaining for some reason. Heck, call me a boomer, call me a sad person, whatever. But as a whole, watching Die Rise speedruns, I actually do find them quite enjoyable, to be honest. I don't know, that might just be me, but as a whole, Die Rise speedruns, they're quite alright. They're quite alright. And there's really not all much to go on Die Rise, seeing as, like, I haven't played this map in, like... F f fucking five years boys like genuinely lost with this map I, like i get like people say they're confused with voyage boys my ass always keeps like getting lost with this map in general like i don't know what the fuck's going on with die rides man it's just all vertical in general like I i'm so lost and like m my ass doesn't know where i'm going my ass doesn't know where i'm going when it comes to playing die rides <laughs> but I don't have a problem with Die Rise personally, I do think it is a fun map whether you're playing with friends to do the easter egg or you're doing solo high rounds because I genuinely think doing solo high rounds on Die Rise actually can be quite fun. So I've got nothing much to say bad about Die Rise apart from the fact that I really don't play it as much but compared to like the other two maps I mentioned it was really tough to place Die Rise somewhere because I actually really do like Die Rise and I was like right. I don't know what to do here and again I'm not placing Die Rise over the Darkest Shore and over Outbreak just because the, those games are non Treyarch. It's just generally because I actually do like Die Rise more than those two maps and in general it's just something that I, I don't know man I don't know just that just Die Rise is something really interesting to talk about when it comes to like you know, like, just talks about the map. Like, I remember Jack made uh, his Zom Squad podcast and was talking to Johnny J about the map. And my, my man's went on a full on ramble and talking about why it's a cool ass map. And I can agree. I really do like Die Rise for what it is. It's definitely not a bad map. Again, 
co-op and solo, it's fun. Solo high rounds, I genuinely really do enjoy whenever I'm doing it. But as a whole, there's not much to go on Dire Eyes, seeing as like, I really don't play as much compared to the other maps. But in general, I actually really do have fun playing Dire Rise solo high rounds. And I think a lot of people do as well when it comes to actually doing it. But hey, if you're my man's Tim Hansen, it's the worst map in Zombies history, you know? <laughs> but in general, and I just fucking died. <laughs> but in general, I definitely do think that Dire Rise is a cool map, whether you're doing the Easter egg or not. But there's really not much to go on about, apart from the fact that I don't think it's the worst. I don't think it's... Like the best but i think it's okay but apart from that that's all i gotta say about die Rise, and that's why it's coming in the number six spot coming in at the number five spot and caleb i know you'll probably hate me for this but it's ascension now ascension was dlc one for black ops one zombies i know i'm showing bo3 on here because i don't have a black ops one ascension but as a whole ascension was the first ever map to bring in a main easter egg the only way to do it though is if you got four players or if you were lucky and you had a pc and shit um, you would be able to do uh, the Black Ops 1 Zombies um, Easter Egg on Ascension or BO3 now solo if you had mods on. Now, Ascension is a cool ass map. You could blow up the rocket, you had the Thunder Gun, you had the Ray Gun, you had the Matryoshka dolls, you had the Gersh devices. I think, this, I think this was the first map to ever bring in Gersh devices, which was really cool. But apart from that, Ascension is definitely a really cool ass map as a whole. Um, there's really not all much to say for it, apart from the fact that, again, it is really, really cool for a DLC 1 Zombies map. I liked how uh, we got some backstory between Gersh and whatever the hell, and um, it's just, in general, again, it is a really, really cool ass map. When it comes to, and I'm going to say this for the future of uh, ranking every single Zombies map might must be best on this channel, I really don't have much to say because I do like all the maps for what they are, but Ascension holds a special place, man. Ascension holds a special place. I really like the rocket easter egg, how you can blow up with the ray gun or just an RPG or somewhat. And just in general, the way you get pack punch using the Lunar Landers is definitely really cool. I think the Lunar Landers is one of the coolest bits for transportation within Call of Duty Zombies. And I hope to see them in the future. And uh, we're getting like some jump pads back from the Rising Drag within Firebase C, which would be definitely really cool to see coming back. But Lunar Landers, man, if they come back somehow, I definitely would think that would be really, really cool to see within Cold War Zombies. Because the way the Cold War Zombies mechanics works with the Lunar Landers, man, I don't know. I just think it would be really cool to see Lunar Landers come back within uh, Call of Duty Zombies instead of it just being an Ascension. I know there's probably custom maps that have Lunar Landers on there, but. I don't know man, I think it would just be really cool to see Ascension come back, well the Ascension Lunar Land was come back, coming to future Zombies maps. But apart from that, that's really all I got to say. I really like how the easter egg is laid out, even though I'm not the biggest person when it comes to 4 player easter eggs and how I really like solo easter eggs, where you can basically do it no matter how many players you want. The way it actually works is definitely really cool, using your teammates to uh, get uh, the certain letters for Luna, holding the buttons, and just in general, it's a really, really cool laid out easter egg. And in general, for high runs on this map, if you want to get better for high runs or just have a fun time doing high runs, this map is definitely for you. High runs on this map is definitely really fun, whether you're training at PhD or Widow's Wine in BO3 or BO1, or just at the Pack Punch area or in Spawn, it's definitely a really fun map to do high runs on. Especially, like, I know it's tedious when it comes to RNG, but it definitely is a really fun map to play for high runs, so yeah. There's really not all much to say apart from the fact that Ascension is a really cool map for the Easter Egg and for its high range. So yeah, that is why Ascension is coming at the number 5 spot. Coming in at the number 4 spot, we have Verrot. Now Verrot was DLC 1 for Call of Duty World at War Zombies. And Verrot, I think, is an underrated map, but not an underrated map. Because I know there's a lot of people out there who actually genuinely hate Verrot. Whether that be the World at War version, the Black Ops 1 version, the Black Ops 3, one of the two. But in general, Verrocked as a whole, I definitely do think it is a really cool ass map. It's got the scary aspect in there with the dentist chair. And it's got a challenge with it. Like, whether that be World at War, BO3 or BO1, 
For what as a whole, whatever version you're playing definitely does have a challenge. And I wish this map genuinely did have a main easter egg because I thought it would have been cool for something like for what a mental asylum to have a cool ass easter egg and for all we know someone might make a custom map of what and maybe do it just like the recently classified made by TZ Ghosts but in general, I definitely do think that Verrucked is a cool ass map. I really do like the scary vibe it brings off. And in general, there's not all much to say about Verrucked apart from the fact that it is definitely really cool. This was the first map to introduce perks and traps into the map. Because in Nactar and Totem, we got none of that shit, boys. All we got was just simple weapons and that was it. Uh, this was the first map to introduce power and some storyline when it came to Peter McKay because as you know there's an, a zombie hand on the wall uh, on the power switch that then leads to into thinking whose hand's this? Wh whose hand's this? And uh, we t it turns out to be Peter McCain's as we figure out uh, Peter McCain's hanging body is missing an arm and uh, he turned out to be Inverucked. So yeah there's really not all much to say for Inverucked apart from the fact that it really Evolutionize zombies further, introducing perks like double tap, speed cola, quick revive, and along with Juggernaut. And the back, and the thing is, though, with quick revive, when it first got introduced, there was literally no need for it in solo. There, it didn't work on solo because they never thought of the ideas of when you done it in solo, you'd actually get more revives in solo, so you get more lives in solo. So in, originally, quick revive for uh, Verrutz back then when it released. It was originally meant for co-op, so Quick Revive was literally useless in solo when Verrat's first released. But again, Verrat, I think it's a cool map for bringing in a good ass challenge. But there's really, again, not all much to say for Verrat, seeing as like the other maps I'm going to mention just brings more. Because it, again, it could be whether that be the Wonder Weapons, the Easter Egg. Verrat is just that simple map. And again, I know a lot of people out there who say uh, Nooktown can get um, you better at zombies. I agree with that, definitely. If you never saw my last Zombies replay episode with Phoenicals, we definitely did say that. But I do think Rock does bring the same to the table, along with being that on BO3. Because BO3s can be hard, whether you're working Gobblegums or not. Or Black Ops 1s, or even World at Wars, which is definitely the toughest. But, apart from that... I really have no problems with Verrot. I definitely do think it's cool with the weapons, just everything about Verrot. I think it is genuinely really, really cool. So yeah, that is why Verrot is coming at the number four spot. Coming in at the number three spot is Dead of the Night. Now, Dead of the Night, I personally think, is one of the most underrated maps in Zombies history. Now, Dead of the Night was hated because it never had a lot of good marketing. Dead of the Night just appeared out of nowhere for Black Ops 4. We never got told, we never got a trailer until the map actually officially released. The map itself, the way it's designed, is really, really nice and really, really cool. I think the characters are one of the most underrated characters we have ever seen in Zombies, in my opinion. I know that this is the one and only time we're ever going to see these characters, but I like the way they're designed, I like their personalities and stuff, like Godfrey and the Sheriff and whatever the fuck. I just think they are definitely really, really cool. And Dead of the Night, again, the way it is designed, I think it is a cool ass map. Definitely one of my favourite DLC 1 maps of all time, seems as I am placing in the top 3. There is a lot to do in this map, you can literally multitask, and if you ever want to get into speedrunning, uh, when it comes to multitasking stuff, Dead of the Night can definitely help you with that, because there's a lot to do within this map when it comes to picking up the silver bullets, the shield, getting the wonder weapon, getting the wonder weapon upgrade 2, getting the wonder weapon upgrade 3, actually doing the easter egg steps, there's a lot to do. On this map, and you can do it in a shortened amount of time the more you do this easter egg, whether you're speedrunning or not. The more you understand the easter egg, the more quicker you can actually do it. And I, I can say that for all easter eggs, but just because Dead Knight does have a lot to bring and a lot to pick up, that's why I'm saying the more you do it, the more quicker you can get shit done. And in general, I do like Dead Knight's design, and I know I've said that a million times for this map already, but in general, I really do like the way Dead Knight is again designed. And again, the characters, I love these fucking characters. I don't know why, I just really like their personalities and just their design as a whole. Love the butler, Godfrey, love the sheriff, just everything is really, really cool about this map to me, in my opinion. There is a lot of problems with this map, definitely, I do agree, compared to stuff like Ancient Evil, because I do like stuff like Ancient Evil and shit. But 
as a whole, this map is definitely like not really bad to me in my opinion. My boy Maniac Killer from No Thumb School goddamn speed runs this map every goddamn day. Maybe not as much, but in Bo4 season, my man was speed running that map like no man's tomorrow. But as a whole, in general, Dead Night, I do like its design, and in general, I do think it's a cool Easter egg. The one and only thing I was disappointed about, definitely did not think this was a bad thing. I wish this was changed is really the boss fight. The way the boss fight works with you actually interacting with the boss fight arena, you turn on the statues and shit, is definitely really, really cool. I actually really do like the boss fight arena, the way you have to interact with turning the statues. I definitely do think that shit's really cool. The boss himself is cool, the way he works, but it's the fact that we've already got a wolf already, like the mini wolf boss that uh, goes around the map as the rounds goes on. We're already facing him, but now we're just fighting a bigger wolf, just the fact that he's literally got no fucking clothes on. But apart from that, I definitely do think the werewolf is really a cool boss as a whole. I think he is one of the most underrated bosses in Call of Duty Zombies in my opinion, but as a whole, the map is really cool, you can get the Wonder Weapon for free if you know where all the certain colour codes are, but apart from that, that's literally all I've got to say for Dead of the Night, I definitely do think it is one of the most underrated maps. Sure, I can say that it's BO4's mechanics that ruins the map, well, I really don't mind BO4's mechanics, but when I hear BO4 complaints till today, specifically for zombies, it's mainly people just talking about the mechanics and its system, and I hear most people saying that if they transferred just all the Black Ops 4 maps to Black Ops 3, they would be good. And I do think the mechanics in Black Ops 4 with the maps that we are given are good till this day. So I really don't mind the BO4 mechanics. But again, with the BO3 mechanics, it would be definitely cool rocking the gobblegums and shit. And again, just these characters, man. Again, I know I like have said it so many times. I really do find them cool. And the Wonder Weapon on this map, Alistair's Folly, which is basically... The, the ray gun, in a sense, for um, the Chaos story. I know a lot of people will agree, but there's a lot of people out there who have said that, so just keep you all in mind there. It's basically just a pistol, just shooting out green acid bombs, and then if you upgrade it, turn it into the Chaos series, you have more abilities to it. And then if you upgrade it to its final stage, which is the Alistair's and I layer, it's definitely a really overpowered wonder weapon, let me tell you. But apart from that, there's... That's all I really got to say for Dead of the Night, and that's why it's coming in the number 3 spot. Coming in at the number 2 spot, and I think a lot of people might be surprised by this, but it's Raven the Redwoods from Infinite War for Zombies. Now, Raven the Redwoods, I know it's definitely easy as hell, it really is, but in general, Raven the Redwoods is not a bad map. It's really, really simple, it's got an easy easter egg, personally. And in general, it's really fun. There is a lot to do in this map, along with its easy easter egg in my opinion. Like, look at this boys, you literally have a lot to explore. You got the boats, you got the crossbows, you got the pack punch, you got what the bits of the easter egg, and then you got a whole side ass easter egg quest here, with grabbing a shovel, pacifier, whatever the hell boys, there's a lot to do on this goddamn map. So, Raven Ravers does bring a lot to the table, and again, what I think about it now, it's like, god damn man, there is a lot of shit to do in Raven and the Redwoods. And Raven and the Redwoods is definitely a fun map to play. I remember when Raven and the Redwoods first released, like, it was definitely a cool ass map. The colour within this map, when you take, when you get high on this map, I don't know what the fuck it is, but when you do get high on this map, everything just turns into bright, colourful, and I really like bright and colourful maps. And Raven and the Redwoods definitely deliver that. Of course it's not bright and colourful now, but when you go into... Uh, the high mode, as we will say, um, it definitely does bring a lot of cool ass colours and you specifically don't need to take the high when um, you're literally doing the easter egg because when you're doing the easter egg you physically need to get high. But apart from that there really is not all much to say for Raven Redwoods and I know I've said that way too many times for the other maps but again Raven Redwoods does bring a lot to the table when it comes to doing a lot of stuff whether that be the side easter egg the main easter egg, and you've got cool ass wonder weapons, the elemental wonder weapons, you've got the world wind which is basically a thunder gun and crossbow, and then you've got the Ben Franklin which is electricity coming down from the sky, maybe not the best against zombies but for the boss fight it definitely is really helpful, and then you've got the trap matic which is the dual wield if you know how to use them right it's actually really good, and the acid dream one of the coolest ones there which basically just uh, makes uh, rain acid everywhere depending on where you've shot the bullet or the crossbow, 
it definitely is really really cool so yeah i think they've done a great job with this map when that comes to the music when that comes to celebrity cast kevin smith and in general you can ride a fucking boat on this map boys like it definitely is really cool like i remember uh after exo zombies and i just stopped doing easter eggs uh when raven redwoods came out uh i let i i never done any bo3 easter eggs at this time uh, i attempted a lot but i just gave up and uh then after that when raven redwoods came out and i heard it was super easter egg, i gave raven redwoods a try and i done it and i definitely thought it was really cool with what they did with raven redwoods and i really wanted to see what else they did bring to the table for this map but in general, Raven and Redwoods, it's not a, a big map, it's a, a, in a sense small, even though you've got the island over there. But it is, in general, really, really cool with what they did. It's bringing in like that Friday the 13th vibe with uh, bringing in the Slasher, Kevin Smith. And in general, it really is cool. Like the melee weapons in this are definitely badass, like the two-headed axe and the machete. Really, really cool ass weapons, and in general, the map setting as well is also cool. And again, the Brent Franklin, like, look at this, boys. Literally raining down thunder, and I know it's good now because I got it on round one, but still, and it's amazing for the boss fight. I'm telling you, one of the probably the best wonder weapon against that goddamn boss in the boss fight. Uh, high rounds for this map, there's really not all much to say apart from the fact that it's all right. It's long, uh, I mainly see people use the travel matic, at least I think I saw Steve using the travel matic, but. Apart from that, that's really all much to say. Like the way pack punch is made, it's just really, really simple. The bow as well, and just the pack punch camos. The pack punch camos, boys, looks really, really nice in this. But apart from that, that's all I really got to say for Raven and Redwoods. It's a good, simple map with a cool ass Easter egg. Maybe short, maybe easy, but it is really, really cool. And the map itself can be colourful when you get high on this map. So yeah, but apart from that, it definitely is really cool with what they did with this map. And that is why Raven Redwoods is coming in the number two spot. If you lads have been counting out the map so far, coming in at the number one spot, it's obvious, it's on the screen, it is their eyes and drag. Their eyes and drag is DLC 1 for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies. This was a map for everyone. Literally, this map brought simplicity for just casual players to get the boys or just in general the easter egg is definitely really cool with its boss fight easter egg speedruns on this map when it came to e for c z for c2 all of them were all awesome and honestly i still see people playing this map till this goddamn day it's definitely a map to play in my opinion there's a lot of people out there who say the rise of drag is overrated i can agree sometimes but I think we can all agree that the Rise of Drag is definitely a really, really great ass map to play as a whole. It's definitely really fun. It's definitely just, in general, it's just so fucking fun. And the bows itself, boys, the bows are cool as fuck. You cannot tell me those bows are not badass. Like the electric, the void, the fire, the wolf. Oh god, and I find the wolf, uh, even though it's not one of my favourite bows, it's one of the best designs in my opinion. And apart from that, that's really all I have to say for, like, the boys and their eyes and drag. There really isn't all that much to say because I know a lot of people out there definitely do think the same for this map. The way the map is designed, the way the easter egg is played, the way to get the bows are definitely really, really cool. The anti-gravity room to get one of the shield parts, the rocket, the Ragnarok, DG4s. It's all amazing and I am really, really glad that to start off their DLC season, they started off with their eyes to track like you're blowing up the moon we haven't seen we haven't seen us blow up a planet since goddamn moon and black ops 1 dlc 4 but in general they've done an amazing job of the rise and drag whether that be it's easter egg it's high rounds the wonder weapons it's all amazing and there's still some secrets still this day in the rise and drag that are probably unsolved still and it's amazing to me tell this day that like the rise of drag is included in a lot of events like Z for C2, E for C 2016 and 2017. It was all really really cool with what they did with the rise and drag and honestly definitely one of the best storyline maps and one of the most best gameplay driven maps ever in zombies history. So yeah, that's all my list for ranking every single DLC 1 Zombies map, my worst to best. This was my personal opinion, I should have said this at the start of the video, this was my personal opinion. And I did say at the start of the video that I hate none of no Zombies maps at all. I will like ones more than others, but I definitely do not hate any at all. So that doesn't mean I hate the Darkest Shore, Outbreak, Die Rise, Ascension, Verrat, Dead, Night, Raven, Redwoods, I do not hate all of them. 
This was just my opinion on what I like more than the other. So yeah, but anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please subscribe, leave a like, click the notification bell, always stay tuned to the channel. Let me know in the comment section down below what your guys' favourite uh, DLC 1 Zombies map and what your worst uh, DLC 1 Zombies map is in the link uh, in the comment section down below. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you all in the next video live stream boys. And goodbye!